Hello ladies and gentlemen, I have managed to acquire myself a a Marantz Umpire USB microphone. I thought it would be really cool to have because um, eventually I'm going to start using my laptop for my videos. So I thought, well, what better than uh, a USB microphone, a condenser microphone at that. So hopefully I'll sound much more cleaner and much more clearer. But we have a problem with this one and the fact that it isn't recognized by the computer and no I don't have a dodgy computer but the actual device is dodgy itself so let's get this thing out of the box and have a look and see what we have So just to show you guys, um, this is it in the box, obviously I've taken it out when I got it, but um, so let me get it out of the box, hold on. So you can see some um, of the bands here, those keep the, the microphone held in place um, to stop it from, you know, taking in noise from the, the, the desk or whatever that's banging around at the time um, and to absorb shock so that you get a nice um, in sound input from the microphone and you don't get like distortion from it being knocked or whatever and we have I forget the name of this shield here but it comes with it as well as part of the package and this is the microphone in question so the thing is is when you plug this in when you plug it into the computer uh, it shows up as an unrecognized device but it turns on got, we've got a blue light um, and that's pretty much it there's nothing else to it I mean obviously I can't get no input from it because it's it's not there so I'm not exactly sure what the issue is here and I'm thinking it's possibly a USB controller issue um, maybe there's something missing or something's broken from it inside uh, so what I would like to do is to try and take it apart and see if we can see exactly what the issue is with this thing because I've tried all kinds of things and I can't get this thing to work so I've already taken the liberty of slightly undoing it a bit it, you have to do it in such a way though that you take off the front grill take that part out um, but you must also take off these side pieces here too and then in there you obviously have there's obviously a screw that goes inside here and I assume there's probably one underneath at the bottom and this is the, the condenser microphone and we can see here, I have to be careful, there is a wire that goes to the chassis of this grill here <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is just take off this or pull the rubber from the microphone here and we're going to need to take off this side of the grill but, uh, it's proving difficult and obviously I'm going to have to try and glue and bend it all back into shape it also turns out there, there is a wire on this too why, why have they done this in such a way I guess to stop some sort of interference well you know what the screw is there so maybe I can just leave it at this but then again there's these wires what? oh actually no there's also a screw 
the back there too. And they did really well to glue this thing in. <clears throat> okay. So we have those two. There's those two screws there. I imagine there's also screws in the bottom of this as well. This is going to be even more difficult because I can't get any access here. So normally you can get these for around about 60 euros on eBay. Of course I didn't pay that kind of money because, well it's broken. I bought it defective knowing that maybe I might not be able to fix it. Who knows. So guys, I'm uh, thinking. I'm thinking of starting up an electronics bit. Oh dear, oh no. Oh dear. Oh, that's sad. I've broken the uh, connector off. Uh, it's just a case of soldering it back on. Oh dear. Whatever will we do? Oh well, we'll fix it. Yeah, so I'm thinking of starting up a business. Just, you know, basic electronic repair. What do you guys think about that? I mean, I'm not exactly the best at the moment, but I'm sure I'll long learn, learn, learn along the way. There's a lot to learn in the electronics repair business. I find it interesting. I also find computers interesting too. But uh, this is becoming a really big hobby for me alongside everything else that I'm doing. Here in Germany. So let's port this thing without breaking it of course. So What's the issue? So we get, it plugs in, the computer sees it, but it can't recognize exactly what it is. So is that a controller issue? Or is that something else? I don't know. So there's nothing on the back of it, all right. There's not too much on the board, to be honest. We have a few resistors, capacitors. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Let me get a light. I'm gonna have to use a head torch because I can't see anything here. I just did a quick bit of research <clears throat> to find out what these three components are. So this is a USB uh, mic audio processor um, and USB controller. Whoops. That is an EEPROM, although I'm not quite sure what for. Uh, I would assume that's obviously to help it be identified or you know whatever. That is an op amp for the um, input of the mic. Uh, so the main we don't need to worry about this area what we need to worry about is this area I assume this area here um, so <clears throat> what I would like to do so it's recognized by the USB kind of you plug it in and it you know it says the device is un unrecognized so since it's unrecognized, it could be one of two things. It could be either the EEPROM or it could just be the USB controller. Um, and really, the only thing I can do to check this 
at the moment is to check the components around the area to see if they are working as they should. So I'm going to start off with the capacitors around the area to see if any of them are shorting to ground. Whoop, wrong way. Whoops. I can't get hold of these properly. I checked this one, didn't I? Yeah. Am I touching something else here? Nope. Okay, so that's kind of like the last one around the area of this USB chip. Okay. So. This seems to be this. Check that in a moment. What's this? Is that one of those filter? Oh, resistor. Oh, resistor. Yeah. Okay, and C um, C9. Oh, I'm touching all this stuff. I need a board holder. This is ridiculous, man. Okay. So, does the problem lie with this then or the EEPROM? I don't know, yo. So, all of the capacitors they check out. which means that this should be theoretically okay but why wouldn't it be recognized okay so after doing a little bit more data gathering I've discovered that I was right this this EEPROM um, is used for uh, according to the data sheet a descriptor an optional descriptor so you can program this EEPROM to name this device whatever you want according and, and this and this obviously will relay that information to the computer um, but the USB is directly connected with this chip here um, and on the block diagram which I look at now says the USB PC host has um, connects to the USB interface of this uh, chip here um, and also the I2C which was is, is this here goes to a register which interfaces with the interface controller and signal processing so <clears throat> what I could try to do basically is just remove this EEPROM and if I remove this EEPROM, maybe it will stop causing maybe a, a, like a, a conflict within this controller here. So let's let's give that a try. Hold on, and I'll plug it in and see what happens. Wait one sec. 
If not, we just stick it back on, but... Oh wait, hold on. Okay. Make sure that there's nothing there that's going to burn. I don't want to kill it. I don't know what I just blew away there. I'll grab it in a minute. Okay, so now we've got the EEPROM off. Let me find out what I blew away. Well, whatever I blew away is gone, so never mind. Alright, so let's just plug in the USB to the computer now and see see if it shows up USB PNP audio device so it works now microphone USB PNP audio device so now it's working that's interesting so that little EEPROM was the, was the problem. Alright. Well, I guess there's only one thing left to do, huh? Hello guys. So, now I'm coming through the mic. The EEPROM is still missing. As you can see, it's still missing there. Um, apologies if the sound is really loud or high um, I've tried to turn down the gain because it looks like it's really spiking um, but yeah it seems to be working I don't know what the quality of the audio is like um, I have to I have to check this but yeah I mean obviously it's in pieces I'll do a quick another snapshot obviously once I've got it back together and um, yeah we can really check the quality of the audio then so give me a couple of minutes and uh we'll try it out again all right guys so i got it back together and this is what it sounds like when it's back together so i've got the pop filter on i remember what it's called and um yeah it's basically back together i mean um i don't know if you can see it on this really bad quality webcam but the the back of the the mic is still coming up but that's because I haven't glued it back together I just threw it back together so that I could test it out and see where it, what it is like so this is what it sounds like uh, coming through the Marantz professional um, USB condenser mic um, but anyway guys let me just put that there I hope you enjoyed it anyway um, it was an interesting video. I was quite surprised that the um, the EEPROM was the issue. Um, maybe I'll, you know, plug it into the EEPROM reader and see if there's anything of like sense on there that I can have a look at. But I really don't think there is, to be honest. Um, so yeah. Um, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and um, I'll see you on the next one. Hopefully with a a better webcam